Tim, there's only one place for us to start. Sort of late last night, the, the decision came through that, that we'll be carrying on and, and the South and the North will stop. I assume that doesn't change your mindset going into the weekend, that we go full throttle and, and look to secure back-to-back wins. 100%. Listen, it's about... The football's about standards. Life's about standards. Standards you set yourself. I believe the team and the, the squad uh, have began to set higher standards in the last few games. Now, listen, OK, we lost to Torquay. Uh, we lost down at Aldershot. I saw um, a, a better standard of play, a more cohesive unit, certainly a more driven, aggressive unit that was prepared to do the hard yards. What I saw on Tuesday night was a, a huge leap in terms of um, commitment levels, effort, everything that you should demand as a prerequisite <clears throat> in, in a football club and a football team. You know, now, listen, the stats that we get back were incredible. There's only one team in England covered more ground as a team, as a squad of 10 outfield players this season. All right? They were averaging 11.3 kilometres a man. Okay? They laid themselves bare on Tuesday night. And by the way, some of them couldn't move yesterday, even in training, you know, training, we trained, but <clears throat> some of the lads were, were still feeling it, you know, it was second day recovery type. Um, they, they gave everything they got for the shirt. And basically when I walked in the door, that's the first thing that I asked, you know, and it, it should be, I know it's an obvious thing, it's a prerequisite at a football club, you know. Now, the key element for me, we, regardless of what, what's developed overnight, is that Barnet Football Club set their own standards. Okay, I demand that effort and commitment again tomorrow. I demand it again on Tuesday night and I demand it for the rest of the season. They've set their standard, they've set their stall. Listen, we ain't going to win every game, but if you, if you show that kind of, of ambition and commitment, you'll be very surprised where that takes you. Add some quality to that and you, you can do some good things. Um, and that's what I'm going to be asking and demanding. Um, you know what's happened's happened for me. At the end of the day, every club <clears throat> has had their vote and had their right of say, and that's what they've decided. As far as I'm concerned, that's an irrelevance to me because I don't want to be in the bottom of this division. I don't want to be in the bottom three of this division. I want to be higher and looking the other way. Um, so we have to now conduct ourselves in a manner where we're saying, like, okay, there's there's our line in the sand from Tuesday. Now we need to to improve on that. So that's where I'm at with it. <clears throat> How much does sort of next season come into your mindset for these remaining games? And the players will obviously be playing to be in your plans. And will there be discussions in the coming weeks about next season? How important is that in your mind at the moment? Massively. Um, listen, I, I drive in with Gary Wilde. Um, you know, so we spend a lot of time in each other's company right now. You, you've sort of been a car for hour and a half a day, uh, well three hours you know, for two journeys and, and we're sitting in the office and we're chatting uh, after training, before training and from day one we've been looking at next season, obviously there's imponderables in terms of you know, what division are we going to be in because of where we are in the division, we're not stupid but recruitment and coaching are the two key elements in, in running a football team um, so you know, it would be remiss of us not to have our eye on the ball and eye on players etc. So one, 100% next season is massively in my mind. Um, we need, or I'm being charged with building a squad, which is what I did previously, um, a squad of players that can, can contest this division and be you know, a, a force in this division. And elements of commitment or commitment levels are a major, a major factor in that. And if you add some, some magic dust into the mix, you know, one or two that can, that can make things happen in a game and change games, which is what I've done in the past, and ally that with physicality, power, pace, you're gonna, you get yourself a decent side. And there's, listen, there's going to be players out there now with what's happened, looking at their future, deciding, you know, or, or probably worrying a little bit what might happen next year. Listen, I've been a player, so you do, you know, you're thinking, well, where, where's my next... Uh, port of call going to be so we need to make sure that we're on the ball um, and we need to you know, I've made no secret about the fact we need to get some players in, into this football club and rejuvenate a squad um, we've got some they proved on Tuesday there's some good players here and I said from the day one I met them all in the, in the home dressing room the first day I walked in I said when I look round here 
if I was coming down to play you with another club and I saw a team sheet with you on it and you and you up front and you in midfield, we're thinking we've got a game on it. These, these have got some good players. Now, for whatever reason, at the minute, it ain't happening for us. Uh, and one, I honestly don't think we're working hard enough. We're not working hard enough. What I saw stats-wise and with my eyes, I listen, stats are what they are, but I watched that and I see lads giving it everything they got. And I said to them after the game, I can take results if I see that. When I see walking football, I can't have it. I can't have it. So, um, yeah, listen, I, I, in the coming few days, uh, you know, I need to be sitting down with, uh, with the powers that be and we need a strategy in place going forward in terms of you know, how we're going to approach the rest of the season. From my point of view, that is getting as many results for this club and our supporters as we possibly can, finish as high as we can in this division, and that's going to take a lot of effort, and planning uh, you know, with, with a strategy going forward into pre-season and a squad to be assembled, not being put together in pre-season, but being put together with a view to reporting on whenever it is, call it the 1st of July, ready to do five weeks into a, a, a new season, hopefully and pretty much certainly with supporters back in the ground. Moving on to this weekend, when I spoke to Anthony Wordsworth after the game on Tuesday, he said that we owed Halifax one for the fact that they'd beaten us up at their place quite heavily. Mm. And he said we now owe it to the supporters and owe one to Woking after what happened at their place. Is that the kind of mindset you want the boys to have going into this one? Yes. Yes. Uh, listen, that, make no mistake, that was part of my pre-match. We, we do a bit of a you know, presentation on the opposition, some VT, and, and, and have a little chat about it. And the bottom line is, Halifax embarrassed us up there. You know, we, we, we embarrassed ourselves up there with a, a, a lack of... Whatever you might call it, listen, whatever happened, happened, but it was, it was a poor performance and a poor result. A similar happened at Woking, okay, I've seen that game back, and I, you know, they played with 10 men for an hour. So, uh, listen, I wouldn't say we owe, we owe them one, we owe ourselves uh, a, better, a better effort and a better performance than what happened there. Uh, if, listen, if we replicate the work ethic, um, that we put in on Tuesday night, then we're going to be in a lot of football matches. We're going to we're going to be in with a say of winning football matches for sure. Um, so what we'll do, you know, when we've you and I have finished, we'll go in there, we'll chat to them, we'll show Woking's strengths and, and, and weaknesses, uh, you know, perceived weaknesses, and, and set about trying to trying to get after them tomorrow. And they'll be doing exactly the same. They'll come here. They're a real honest team, good side. They'll get in our face. And they'll they'll try and make it a rumble, and they've got some good players. So, listen, as long as we we fight fire with fire and, and match that up, then um, hopefully we should be you know we should be in with a, a shout of a result. Do you want to touch on the performances of Michael Petrasso since he's come back from injury? Because I guess in some ways you had to be patient with him because he had a ham, hamstring injury, and he had to be patient to get back out there. Yeah. But since he's returned, he looks like a man who's really enjoying his football, and, and the stats are showing it. Yeah, no, he's a. Listen, Michael's, Michael has an effect on a game. You know, he's got end product. You know, sometimes, lads, there's 100 step overs, a couple of cry turns, a back flick, and then Scotch missed, you know. So, uh, Michael, he came on uh, here, uh, I think it was against, was it Altrincham? Anyway, he's, he's, got, he's got a couple of great balls in that we should do better with and score, or we'll certainly get on the end of, a couple of wonderful crosses. Um, uh, he scored three since he came back from uh, injury and could have had a couple more. Um, uh, and he, he has a little bit of end product. You know, when, when he gets in the final third, something happens. So, you know, you've got to look at that and think, yeah, OK, I mean, he's a guy that, you know, he's, he's our top scorer, I think, is he not? Uh, you know, so the, the kid's got a little bit of something at the end, uh, at the business end of the pitch. So, uh, yeah, he's done really well. He's a nice lad, he's quiet, he's low maintenance, he gets on with his job. Um, and he's a good kid. So, listen, at the moment, he's grasped the nettle and, and took his chance. So, fair play to him. Let's finish on, on the supporters because, I mean, on social media and in general, the feel-good factor certainly seems to be back just with that one win on Tuesday. How important is it that we build on that feel-good factor and continue to make the fans proud no matter what the, the situation is off the pitch? It's, it's the massively league. important. It's massively, like you and I talked um, post-match the other night and... and you know, I, I, 
I don't come out there and I'm not trying to curry favour or whatever. The bottom line is, this, this team, this group of players owed this club and the people that support it and follow it, they owed them that. And that, that's, for me, that is a minimum requirement. You know, you people go out, you know, and, and Juddy's splattered his nose and there's blood all over his shirt and they're coming in and they look absolutely drained when I'm talking to them after the game. That's how you should be. That's what a dressing room should be. And they're happy, they're tired and content. They can get in their car, which is what I said to you, and go home and put their head on the pillow and know they've put a good night's work in and a good shift, you know. And I'm telling you now, I, I, I was a supporter as a kid. I followed Coventry City for years. Uh, and if you sit in a stand and you watch a like, group of lads having a go, you know, you, you, you'll, you'll probably buy into it. You know, now listen, I'm not, I'm not stupid. Results will hire me or fire me, that, that's for sure. But I think when you've got a group that will go to the wealthier week in, week out, supporters will see that and they'll respond to it, you know. And there's no doubt they'd have been given a, a rousing reception coming off the pitch. But that's got to become the norm and not, not sporadic, you know. That's got to be something that we serve up week in, week out, and add to that some quality. But we are creating a few more chances. We are looking a little bit more spiteful and hurtful at the business end of the pitch. And touch wood, you know, we're looking a little bit harder to break down and harder to beat. And, and those things are, are a process that take time. You know, it takes time to gel as a, uh, and tactically how you want them to, to play. And hopefully we're seeing um, some, some, some green shoots. But um, listen, there's some tough games coming up, so uh, we'll be tested. There's no doubt about that. So, listen, we, we, we look to tomorrow. That's our next game, and, and try and get a result for the fans and the football club.